Hello, my name is Rebecca Muller. During today's lesson, we will begin with linear inequalities, look at some nonlinear inequalities, systems of inequalities, and end with a linear programming problem. Let's begin now. A linear equality in two variables is an inequality of the form ax plus by is greater than c, less than c, greater than or equal to c, or less than or equal to c. Let's get to our first example. We want to use traditional graphing methods to graph the inequality 3x minus 5y is greater than 6. Now before we look at the graph, let's just recall a few things that we already know. And that is that the format of this inequality, if it had an equal sign, would be linear. That means that when we graphed it, we would end up with a straight line. One thing we know about graphing straight lines is that one method is to end up finding the intercepts. Then we'll look at what happens when we have an inequality. Here, we're going to have as a boundary the equation 3x minus 5y equals 6. To find those, that boundary, we're going to begin by graphing the intercepts. Let's let our x value equal 0. When we substitute in a 0 for x, we end up evaluating negative 5y equals 6. That will give us a result of negative 6 fifths. If we plot that point, that's negative 1 and 1 fifth, and it's on the y-axis, approximately here. If we let our y value equal 0, then we are evaluating the equation 3x equals 6, and that gives us a value of 2. So the x-intercept is at 2, 0. Now, if you recall, the original inequality, 3x minus 5y, was greater than 6. We don't really want to include the equation because of this strict inequality. For that reason, when we graph this line, we'll end up graphing it as a dashed line. This is going to serve only as our boundary. Now, it's a boundary between two half planes. Either the bottom half of this line will end up being shaded or the top half, because all of the points to the bottom of this line end up solving either where it's greater than or less than. To determine whether we shade the bottom or the top, we're going to end up looking at two methods. The first method is to take the inequality and solve for y. That would be negative 5y is greater than 6 minus 3x. And then division by negative 5, recall, will end up changing the inequality sign from greater than to less than. And what we're in interested in at this point is this part of the inequality. y is less than. For my y values to be smaller than certain values, we need to think about moving in the negative direction, moving down on the y-axis. For this reason, the half plane that ends up being shaded in will end up being below this boundary point. The other method that we could use is to choose what's called a test point. Many times, if the equations do not go through the origin, that's the easiest test point to choose. Here's why we do that. Let's test whether or not 0, 0 is part of the solution set to this inequality. To do that, we'll substitute into the inequality 3 times 0 minus 5 times 0. And what we're trying to find out whether, is whether or not we end up with a true or a false statement. Is 0 greater than 6? That is a false statement. What that indicates to us is that 0, 0, which is toward the top of this graph, this straight line, is not part of the solution set, which would have indicated to us that we need to graph to shade in the bottom as we did. That was our linear inequality that we wanted to look at. Now let's move on to a nonlinear situation. We want to use traditional graphing methods in order to graph x squared plus quantity y plus 3 squared is less than or equal to 16. As in our last problem, our boundary will be the equation x squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 16. That's a circle that has a center at 0, negative 3, and has a radius of 4 units. We end up plotting the center, and I'll move 4 to the right, 4 to the left, 4 up, and 4 down and connect the points. Now, the question to you might be, should I end up including that circle or not? Here was the original inequality. We had less than or equal to 16. The equals in this part of the inequality sign tells us that when we draw in the circle, we actually would like to draw it in as a solid line, 
Remember in our last example, we ended up drawing it in as a dashed line because of the fact that it really wasn't part of the solution set. Now, we would like to have all of the values that are less than or equal to 16. 16 was our radius. If we want values to be smaller than the radius value of 4, we end up shading inside the circle. We could also have chosen a test point in order to decide where to shade in here. Now let's look at a system of inequalities. We want to use traditional graphing methods to graph the following system. We have x squared divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 9 is greater than 1 as our first inequality. We have x squared minus y squared is greater than or equal to 1 as our second, and negative 4 is less than, x, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4 is our third. The first equation is the equation of an ellipse. It has x-intercepts at when we allow y to be equal to 0 for our boundary. Let's look at the equation. I'll rewrite this over to the right. This will be our boundary. x-intercepts of plus or minus 2. y-intercepts of plus or minus 3. Should we include the ellipse as actually part of our Solution, this is a strict inequality, so when we draw this in, we'll draw it in as a dashed line. Now, in this case, when we look at the inequality, we note that what we'd like is for this expression to be greater than 1. In order to be shaded in, in the inside, we would have looked at values smaller than 1, so we'd have smaller than a certain uh, small region. Instead, what happens here is we end up shading everything outside of the ellipse. Now, we also need to graph our second inequality. That's x squared minus y squared is greater than or equal to 1. This is the equation, x squared minus y squared equals 1, of a hyperbola. This hyperbola is going to end up having x-intercepts at plus or minus 1 and have asymptotes of y equals x and y equals negative x, and we'll end up including that hyperbola in our solution set because of the fact that we have an inequality here that includes the equal sign. So drawing that in, we basically get this picture. Now, because this is an inequality, we need to decide where we need to shade in on the plane. The hyperbola actually divides the plane into three regions, the part to the right of the hyperbola, in between the two curves, and then to the left. And so we're going to choose test points in each section. Notice that we could choose the point 2, 0 to test for the right-hand side. That will give us, in our e inequality, x squared minus y squared is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to test the point 2, 0 in the following way. We have 2 squared minus 0 squared greater than or equal to 1. Because that ends up being 4 greater than or equal to 1, that's a true statement. And that means we do want to shade in this part of the region to the right of the hyperbola. At the origin, we'd end up with 0 squared minus 0 squared greater than or equal to 1. That's a false statement, so we will not shade in this region. To the left, we end up testing maybe negative 2, 0, and that would also give us 4, because negative 2 squared is 4, minus 0 greater than or equal to 1, which is true. So we can shade in the region to the left. Our final inequality is notice where x is between negative 4 and positive 4. These are two vertical lines, one of which is x equals negative 4. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can include that straight line because of the fact that we have not a non-strict inequality. And we have another straight line at positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 units over. And here we can notice that x has to be between those two points, so we would end up shading everything between those two lines.
Now, on my screen, it's a little hard to decipher what we've ended up with because of all of the overlapping lines. Sometimes it would, you might want to do is use different colored pencils in order to help you see the result. But what we're looking for are the regions that actually are shaded in all three cases as our final result. We can note that we need to be outside of the ellipse, we need to be in the interior, if you'd like to think of it, out of the hyperbola, and we need to be between these two lines. That ends up being this section in here, where I have all three parts overlapping, and in here. And so this is really the region that we end up with graphed. Now it's time for you to try a problem on your own. I'm going to give you a system of inequalities and ask you to get end up at the solution set. Let's graph the following system. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 4, and y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 1. Turn off the tape and try to do the graph on your own. Then turn the tape back on in order to check your work. Let's look at the graphs now. We have x plus 2y is less than or equal to, equal to 4. The boundary to that is the straight line x plus 2y equals 4. We can graph that by using intercepts. If x is equal to 0, y is 2. If y is equal to 0, x is 4. Let's plot those points. Now, should we include that line in our solution set? It depends on the inequality sign. Here, we do not have a strict inequality. What that means to us is that we would like to include the straight line as part of our solution. We now need to decide as to which side to, to shade in. I'm going to use a test point, since the equation is not already solved for zero, uh, for y that is, and it's easy to substitute in the origin here. Let's substitute, we end up with zero, plus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 4. 0 less than or equal to 4 is a true statement, which means I want to include the origin in my solution set, so I will shade below the line. Next, we look at the equation of y equals x squared minus 1 as a border to the second part of our inequality system. That's going to be a, a parabola which has been shifted one unit down from the origin. So to graph that, we can plot a few points. And do we want to include the parabola in our solution set? Yes, we do. So we'll connect our points with a solid line. And next, we want to consider whether or not to shade in. Here, our equation is already solved for y. We have that y needs to be greater than this particular value. When y needs to be greater than something, we need to think about moving in the positive direction on the y-axis. In order to do that, notice that below the, hyperbola, the parabola would have been negative values. Above it end up being the positive ones. This area that ends up including both of those shaded regions is here. That's the solution set. Now, the graphing calculator can also do shading for us. Let's consider the following system of inequalities and try to graph that on the graphing calculator. We would like to use the shading capabilities of your graphing calculator in order to graph the following system of inequalities. Our first inequality is y is greater than or equal to 2 to the x power. Our second one is y is less than or equal to 8. I've already entered into the calculator the equations y equals 2 to the x and y equals 8. Let's now look at how we can end up doing this graphically. I have the cursor over the, this is a TI-83, and I have the cursor over the little bar to the left. What happens is if I continue to press enter, notice how that changes. Here, we notice that this is going to shade everything above the graph of y equals 2 to the x power. And in this case, that's exactly what we want. If I move down, we wanted the values of y to be less than or equal to 8. If I continue entering, there it is above, and here it is below. Let's look at what that gives us on a standard window. 
what we're seeing now is the graph of y equals uh, y is greater than or equal to 2 to the x power. The second entry is y is less than or equal to 8. It's fairly hard to see what's going on here, but what we have is an overlap of regions where we have above one graph and below the other. And so the graphing calculator can actually help us in solving inequalities also. As our last problem, we're going to look at something called linear programming. This has to do with applications. The problem is as follows. We'd like to maximize aid to disaster victims in China who have had a disaster of an earthquake. They're going to need medical supplies and bottled water. Each medical kit measures one cubic foot and weighs 10 pounds. Each container of water is also one cubic foot, but weighs 20 pounds. The plane can only carry 80,000 pounds with a total volume of 6,000 cubic feet. Each medical kit will aid four people, while each container of water will serve 10 people. How many of each should be sent in order to maximize the number of people aided? Now, the problem seems fairly complicated, but many times in life, problems are like that. These lead to something we call linear programming problems. To solve a linear programming problem, we're going to begin by writing out the objective function and all necessary constraints. The objective in this problem was to maximize the number of people aided. We are then going to graph the feasible region for the problem, identify all vertices or corner points, and then finally, and find the value of the objective function at each vertex. Finally, we'll use the solutions at each vertex, which provides the optimum value of the objective function as our final result. All right, let's begin by writing down some pertinent information that we had from the problem. We know that the objective is to maximize the number of people aided. So we need to write down a, an expression that tells us about how many people end up being aided. Well, we're told that there are going to be four people aided by each value of, by each water bottle, uh, sorry, by each medical kit. Let's set up our variables to begin with. X is equal to the number of medical kits and y is going to equal the number of containers of water. So repeating, the number of people aided will be four people for each medical kit plus 10 people for each container of water. This is again is all called our objective equation. We have some constraints and those come from the limit on the volume and the limit on the weight that we can have on the, in the plane. We know that the volume is constrained by it has to be less than or equal to 6,000 cubic feet. The volume, we know, is just going to be the number of medical kits, which take up one cubic foot each, plus the number of containers of water, which are also one cubic foot each, less than or equal to 6,000 cubic feet. We also have a constraint having to do with weight. And we were told that our weight has to be less than or equal to 80,000. And so we're going to have 10 pounds for each medical kit, plus we have 20 pounds for each container of water. And that ends up having to be less than or equal to 80,000. Before we go to the graphing, I'm going to go ahead and notice that I can divide this bottom inequality by 10 and end up getting x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8,000. Now let's look at what we need to do. We need to look at the graph of these two inequalities. We have x plus y is less than or equal to 6,000. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8,000. We look at our borders. x plus y equals 6,000, which has x and y intercepts of 6,000 each. And we draw this in as a solid line. By the way, I, I only have to consider the first quadrant in this problem because of the fact that we know that the number of water bottles and the number of medical kits both have to be positive values. Our second inequality, oh, by the way, here if I solve for y, let me go ahead and do that before I continue. 
we note that y has to be less than, which means that what I'll end up doing is shading below this line. I'm going to hold off on the shading for a moment. Next, we're going to look at x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8,000. I want to look at the equation first and get our intercepts. If x is 0, y is going to be 4,000. If y is 0, x is 8,000. Let's graph those two points, 8,000, 0, and 0, 4,000 and connect those in a straight line. And again, if we solve for y, we can see 2y is less than or equal to 8,000 minus x. And if I divide by 2, I can see I'm still going to have y less than or equal to, which is important, which means that the feasible region that we end up with is below both lines. Now, we need to pick out the vertices or corner points of this region. Notice we have 1 at the origin. We have 1 that we've already found on the y-axis. That was 0, 4,000. We have 1 on the x-axis. That was 6,000, 0. And we also have an intersection point that we need to discover. This intersection point can be found by looking at the, the solution to, a, to the system of equations, x plus y equals 6,000, and x plus 2y equals 8,000. I'm going to do that by noticing that if I multiply this equation by negative 1 and add it to the second equation, I'll do that underneath here, negative x minus y equals negative 6,000, we can add the two equations together to give us y equals 2,000. And if y is 2,000, my x value will be 4,000. So this point is 4,000, 2,000. So again, we've graphed the linear inequalities. We've shaded in the region which is feasible. We've looked at each of the corner points. Now, what we do with each of those corner points is to then take those corner points and put them into our objective equation. Let's do that now. We had the point 0, 0. Another point that we needed to consider was 0, 4,000. We had the point 6,000, 0. And we had the point 4,000, 2,000. What we're going to do with each of those points is to substitute in to our objective function, the number of people aided. That was equivalent to 4x plus 10y. So we'll substitute in. If we end up sending over zero medical kits and zero bottles of water, we aid no one. We could send over zero medical kits and 4,000 bottles of water, potatoes of water, and end up serving 40,000 people. If we sent over 6,000 medical kits but no water, we'd end up serving 24,000 people. And finally, if we end up sending over 4,000 medical kits and 2,000 bottles of water, substituting into this um, expression gives us 36,000 people aided. Since our objective was to maximize the number of people aided, we end up with the most number of people aided if we end up sending over no medical kits and 4,000 containers of water. Because this is what we said we wanted to do at the outset, this would be what we choose to do on that particular plane. Now, we've progressed through a series of things having to do with systems of, of inequalities. We started off with linear inequalities, moved to nonlinear. We continued with systems of, of inequalities, and finally stopped with a linear programming problem. There's a lot to review in this section. Spend some time doing that now.